sober October, isn't it? It's sober October, a, a month that I usually look forward to in the same way some people look forward to um, dry January. I prefer the sober October because it's more of a challenge because usually there's loads of birthdays happening on October. There's Halloween happening on October. There's what else happening? Halloween, birthdays. Ah, bada, 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 bada. Loads of raves, isn't it, usually happening around October. It feels like there's a lot of kind of underground, dark, dingy things that's going to capture imagination. Like even this weekend, there's like this, um, what's this like queer, LGBTQ friendly flipping festival happen? It looks fucking amazing. It's spread over like six flipping venues, right? It looks fucking banging. That's happening this weekend, right? And Agassino's not going. Do you know what I mean? What is it? My, is the camera not um, in focus? Obviously, in focus. It's in focus. Yeah, it's in focus. So, and I guess, you know, isn't going, right? I'm not going to be able to go to this sort of thing because, you know, by and large, I want to get the first kind of week out of the way. With Sober October, that's usually a trick. You can usually get away with going out and not getting tempted to drink or to do drugs or do whatever that you kind of want to stop as a vice in the month if you just give yourself the first week to kind of bang out once you get that first week out the window it's usually quite hard to kind of cave in to having a drink or having a shot or something it's usually easy to avoid because you're like you know what i'm not gonna waste like now what we're at day eight i'm not gonna i'm not gonna just count out the days you know that day eight and just just for the sake of having a drink do you know what i mean and it's gonna taste much sweeter on the flipping end of the month when i do have the opportunity to do because i think if i'm not mistaken isn't yeah if, um halloween is on like the 30th so if you want to be cheeky if you want to be cheeky you could go out on the sunday right especially for me because i start work pretty late on the monday i could go out on a sunday get smashed and then start getting on it from the f sunday m like sunday you know uh, midnight wherever as it rolls into the first but you know i'm just gonna chill so there's a sick festival happening at the moment right in london here or this weekend called body movements festival um and it's got amazing people playing, right? Great guests, all that good stuff. Everyone's going to have a great time, I'm assuming. And I'm obviously not going because I want to give myself this first week off to just be um, locked in, be able to do stuff that I want to do in terms of working out and all that other good stuff that I've got planned in terms of what I want to do from my uh, Sober October stuff. Um, but the list of people playing is just wild. It's absolutely insane, the amount of people that are, going, that are playing here, right? Um it's a festival, I think it's spread over, where is it, Body Movement One Night, is it, da, da, da. where is it, where is it, yeah, yeah, cool, so I'll, I'll put it up on the screen quickly actually, I'll put it up on the screen, look what's happening, Body Movements is the East London Queer Dance Festival, the multi-venue uh, mega rave spans across 16 spaces in Hackney Wick, uniting the creative mind and the movers of the LGBTQ plus dance music scene for a unique day of night programming, collectives that have been spreading their joy queerness for years will be side by side working together sharing stages dances energies and body movement we've invited over 40 emerging established queer non-binary queer uh, non-binary trans artists to soundtrack the industrial spaces across the week in tandem with the international greats from the lgbtq plus um community we are excited to present our lineup to in our com coming weeks london has yet to see one like this body movement that is about shining light body movements for for my body your body one day one night six industrial stages music from local international artists of the lgbtqi plus community independent food and drink vendors uh, catering for vegans meat lovers gluten-free people and everyone in between the spaces of a 16 spaces with a stringent queer um, respect and door policy we are taking over tamperons we're taking over tape rooms terraces breweries courtyards and so much more stage and respect policy information can be found on our website the music is going to be supporting the local and established names which contribute to lgbtq lgbtqi plus dance community in their unique way with a stronger emphasis on independent collectives labels and artists who make our scene the multifaceted multi important that it is this is sick right because this essentially answers the question that everyone's been arguing about over over lockdown right in terms of representation diversity in terms of just having your voice and your face and your lifestyle and your community represented in these places i think some people were speaking about it the other day on twitter about some edm festival and about how there's so many girls that go there that attend these festivals, right? You see them, all, especially these um, thirsty Instagram pages where they post pictures of like scantily clad girls at these flipping festivals, right? Super attractive. All these young girls hanging around, having a great time. But for whatever reason, the DJ lineups never reflect the people that actually go to these events. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying all those girls that go in there are flipping DJs, but still, you, you, you can potentially find the next big star, the next big person that's going to reignite that scene. Maybe it's in a crowd. But you also just want the crowd to be reflective of the lineup because why not in it like why have a, a whole festival full of amazing looking people that span you know all different genders and races and backgrounds colors and creeds but then have the lineup be so like you know mayonnaise it doesn't make any sense and then i've always argued my thing is i've always said like, i know it's hard harder harder said harder 
harder said than done, right? Harder said there or harder done than said, whatever that what that term is, that there should be more onus on just like setting up your own thing as opposed to moaning and complaining about these established institutions institutions because they're set up in a way that they kind of do favors for their friends. Like anybody that knows anything about nightlife and DJing and going out and stuff, you know that a lot of the a lot of the kind of bring ins you get, a lot of the opportunities you get are usually based on the the kind of community that you're part of, your friendships that you make, the connections you make at nighttime, which is why people say it's really crucial to kind of go out and kind of, instead of just sending mixes to people, go out and actually take part, right? Take part, dance, have a good time, um, befriend people, try and just like engross yourself in what your community is. And then from then on, you can maybe have an opportunity to kind of build and have the opportunity to maybe play in certain places. But even then, it's a bit cringe, just kind of. Just try and find new friends, find new community and then see how that goes. And obviously with that, that community you find, I've always said, why not just take that community and just do your own thing, right? You're never going to be um, on the lineup for like a time warp or these big ADE festival stages. They're not going to do it because their audience who they cater for is fairly middle of the road. Um, the people that organize it don't really want to take risks, which is understandable too. I remember there was a press conference or a pound discussion i remember listening to a few years ago with seth Choxler and some guys from fabric and he was basically being quite honest about how the position that he's in right saying i want to book more new uh, djs and acts and stuff but i also have to be um i also have to be sensitive of the idea that i run fabric i mean i'm the head booker of fabric fabric is an institution i can't just be booking some no-name person because they're not going to be able to sell tickets and in order to make this thing work and to be able to pay people salaries i need tickets to be sold right it's just like a plain black and white situation but of course that no-name person who's uploading soundcloud soundcloud mixes and getting like 10 listens how are they ever going to get an opportunity to play if they don't have an opportunity to play right it's a kind of a cyclical thing and again we don't have resident dj culture in the uk so it's kind of hard we're not in a bit we're not in a club you want to play anyway we don't really have that resident dj culture really that much so it's kind of hard to kind of figure out how you're going to get in anyway that being said the good thing is that there's so many venues, so many spaces available where you can kind of do your own little thing. And this is super creative. The fact that they've got 16 different stages, all in Hackney Wick. It's this really cool idea where you're able to kind of book the people that you want to book, promote that kind of sound. And then hopefully in a way, I wouldn't say re-educate the, the kind of customer base or the punters, but just offer them an alternative. That's all they need, just an alternative. And I've always said that. If you're able to offer, if you're at Time Warp, or you're at Love, Love what's, what's that thing called? Um, not Time Warp, so I have a big one. I don't know, name another big festival, right? I just would like it if they had festival stages that just were just a little bit different from each other, right? In terms of a contrast, in terms of, okay, let's get this stage available, which is very, you know, forward thinking in terms of being LGBTQI plus friendly. And then maybe get a really standard kind of ADE time warp um, sort of, you know, Circo Loco kind of um, lineup. And then just give people an option. You know what I mean? Because you might you might be able to get some fans going over to that side to go over to that side. It's just it's just nice to kind of see that. And I, and I think in general, it would give your event a far better tapestry, a far better feel, a far better kind of texture. You know what I mean? When you're seeing the pictures of people, you're seeing all these amazing looking people that way. You're seeing quite regular looking kind of lads and with their flipping um, side bags on that way. I think it just makes the festival look a bit better as opposed to nowadays because all the names that are getting booked are the same you get the same people that listen to the same music you get the same people that are attending the thing so it just ends up being loads of copycats of each other right everyone's wearing those funky shirts like there was a couple of festivals i saw over the weekend everyone was wearing fucking or a few months ago everyone's wearing those weird you know flowery patterned shirts with jean shorts and shit it's the same person with the same thing whereas i think that person if they just showed them maybe a little bit something they might be interested or they might not they might say you know fuck off i'll go listen to, i'll go stick with michael bibby but still give them the option to have the ability to hear that and to see it in context with the people that are actually playing the music who are about that culture dancing around it and then they can vibe with it i think that usually is the best way to go about those kind of things but again what do i know but it's just cool to see regardless um body movements again it's all sold out anyway so for sure they've been successful um the only thing that looks like it's available now are the after parties um you got you got the heron sauna that kind of um berlin collective they're doing one so that's going to be absolutely sick so if you're around definitely go and check that out if you want to do so but yeah body movements um happening tomorrow in london it looks like an absolutely barn summer of event i cannot wait I cannot wait for everybody that's going to be dressing up and having a great time and uploading all their little things onto the social media.